Well, I had always worked in kitchens and worked at a bakery. You know, the first day into the bakery, I was there to try out and I just fell in love with the, the whole idea of bread. You know, it's a living food um, and it's all this art and science and, you know, the physicality. It just really grabbed me right away and I fell in love after that first day of baking and it's just fascinating to me. I didn't have a bakery, a brick and mortar, but it was about teaching people how to make bread and holding bread courses. And I thought, hey, why not couple the bread with education and come up with a, a new concept, you know, around bread education, around sharing of this idea of how to make natural leavened breads. And it's about my, my love for community and connecting people and education. I thought I needed to develop a company where they can understand what I'm trying to do, which was more than bread. We have a responsibility, um, and that's to listen. You know, whether in terms of water, how we, how we harvest water, in order to survive, in order to become sustainable communities, we're gonna need to share. Tucson Water's been around for over 100 years. It's definitely been a core part of what makes Tucson unique, what makes it sustainable. Since World War II, the population has expanded and uh, really grown as an economy. Uh, but that has required the development of additional water supplies. Central Arizona Project uh, was conceived when it was pretty evident that uh, Central Arizona uh, was not going to be sustainable from a water supply standpoint. Uh, Central Arizona was completely reliant on local groundwater, which was uh, non-renewable, um, was plentiful, but was being mined out. We had water level declines that were starting to occur. And so it took uh, many decades for it to take place, um, but it was really uh, to make Central Arizona more sustainable long-term from a water supply perspective. Early on, the community uh, had every intention of using our Colorado River water on a day-to-day -day basis, very similar to the Phoenix Valley cities. The big solution for sustainability was this water supply that we're importing and our implementation of it was, was a debacle. And it really wasn't about the quantity, it was about the quality and the re-equilibration or the mixing of that new water with the old water that really um, was a community crisis. Once we had the issue and the crisis of the early 1990s, uh, the, the, the Tucson Water leadership and the city leadership and the community really came together to find a way forward from there. That led us down the path of doing the technology we use, which is recharge and recovery, where we actually use our aquifer to not just store our water, but as our treatment facility and as our way of transmitting water. I don't know if I really had a choice on whether I decided to farm or not. Um, everyone thinks I'm doing a good job, so <laughs> I don't get yelled at too much. We decided to try to start growing organic wheat uh, about six years ago. Uh, traditionally, we've been growing cotton, uh, grains, alfalfa, but we were approached by kind of native seed search to see if they'd want to. Uh, have us try out growing some organic uh, white sonora wheat. And we wanted to grow something that was native to the region since it is kind of, I don't know, climatized to, to hot weather. We had our first harvest. We had all this grain, we didn't know what to do with it. So a lot of uh, breweries actually picked up on it at first and they were our major buyer. When we showed them these raw wheat berries and we tell them, you mill this into flour, they had no idea that's how flour was even made or even what a raw wheat berry looks like. Uh, the relationship with VKW Farms started when we held a, uh, a conference, sort of a, a recruiting of farmers um, talk with white Sonoran wheat. They were there in the audience, but they raised their hand and said, hey, I want to participate. How do I get involved? He was wanting to source more locally grown grains for his own operation. It wasn't until about two or three years ago that we actually added in milling facilities to our operation. And that actually opened up a, basically a whole new market for us. So from there, um, it just had snowballed into what it is now with five, five local varieties and then sourcing some other grains. This is what's needed. 
I think, you know, for me, sourcing local means I can get my wheat from 15 miles away rather than 300 miles away or 500 miles away. But I think uh, ultimately that's, that's my commitment is making regional breads. And regional breads to me means whatever we can grow here in the desert will be my approach to the breads I offer at my shop. So coming out of the early 1990s, when we had um, real challenges with trying to do conventional surface water treatment uh, for our Colorado River water, that's when we really discovered the potential of using recharge and recovery for our use of Colorado River water. The first water uh, recharge project was actually, and it, that built in Arizona was actually here on our farm. Uh, we had an uh, old gravel pit, uh, just basically holes in the ground, and one of our irrigation system was right next to it, so it was easy for us to just put a pump into the CAP canal, put the water through our irrigation system, and turn it out into those recharge projects. So that's kind of how the whole water recharge thing uh, was born in the state of Arizona. So the way groundwater recharge and recovery works is you take the source water that you're trying to recharge and you put it into a recharge facility. That can be open spreading basins where the water infiltrates downward through the soil profile. You can use wells for that or it could be used directly on a farm field. And either way, we're benefiting the aquifer. If we apply it onto our farm fields, it gives them a much larger footprint to be able to recover the water from. If we're using Colorado River water on an active farm field, we're actually no longer pumping groundwater that we would have pumped and used to raise those crops. Um, in our case, we do use the, the recharge basins, and that water percolates downward toward the groundwater table, where it then mixes with local groundwater. Now they're producing a mix of groundwater and recharged Colorado River water that we then deliver to our customers. The water table has actually come up almost 100 feet since the late 90s to today, and they're thinking that it has about a five mile influence in this whole area. So it has actually been a very good partnership, especially when it comes to groundwater levels. So those partnerships are what enabled us to move from a, a standpoint of an inability to use our Colorado River water to getting onto the path of where we are today, where we're at full utilization. Tucson currently uses the same amount of potable water that it used in the mid-1980s with 200,000 more people here and a much bigger economy. So it's been both how we use our water or the conservation ethic that we have and the water, use, water resources that we use that have had to evolve over time. You know, I think growing these heritage and ancient grains um, is a first step in the solution. My great-grandmothers were probably making tortilla with this white Sonoran wheat, and, and I feel a strong connection to this land um, because this is where my family has had been for many, many years. We can no longer expect something out of the earth that it cannot produce. We need to, to be stewards of the land and be accepting of of what we have in front of us, and I think all we need really is in, is in front of us, and we need to change rather than trying to change the land. For example, some of these heritage wheats consume 30% less water than some of the modern wheats. So I will continue to bake bread with the grains that are most appropriate to grow here. Water plays a role in how we provide food to this community in a number of ways. When you look at the partnerships that occur between a Tucson Water and a BKW Farms and a, and a company like Barrio Bread, where the water that we provide goes to grow the wheat, that is the wheat that they're using to, to bake these wonderful breads here in Tucson, that is the, an example of the circular economy and how water is really what helps a circular economy flow from the source uh, to the producers to the consumer. What we've created is a sustainable community in the Sonoran Desert, and that's what gives me the, the biggest sense of pride.